Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This story is called Debeaconing, written by the cursor hasn't moved. Jin Pop Chang was feeling pretty good. The last junk runs had been incredibly profitable, and the glass golf wasn't running out of salvage anytime soon. In fact, things were going so well that she had considered moving the whole clan out to one of the terraform planets once she'd finally paid off the generational debt. The humans had been making barren rocks in the glass gulf into habitable places for almost everyone, and it was apparently an entirely business endeavor. Imagine editing entire planets for profit. She was just mulling over whether she wanted a clan on a garden world or a rough world and other such present visions. When her ship detected a beacon, it looked like a standard escape pod beacon, another thing the humans had introduced to the various star nations after they made first contact. But it had a prefix, DB. She ran the code and it turned up as the Republic of Terror, pre-contact. There couldn't be a survivor in there. Humans don't live that long, she muttered to nobody in particular. Her digital crewmate living on the edges answered, Nope, they don't. Gah! When did you come into the cockpit? She demanded with a glare towards the interior camera. Like half an hour ago, I was cleaning up some artifacting in the forward sensor data. Edge, what did we agree on to keep my poor hearts from giving out? Sorry, Ginny, but I thought I wasn't supposed to wake you even if you're supposed to be on watch. Jin popped John, snapped her head back in irritation and muttered, Since you're here... You might as well send out a general hail to see if there's any of the Republican ships around. I, I, uh, ha, huh. that's weird. No answers, not that, uh, the potch trajectory, it's, uh, going voidward, upward, toward, uh, you're from the Republic, don't your pods aim towards uninhabited planets automatically? Yeah, they do, Bo. We have an answer. RTM, I got big berths answering. Hello, this is certified junker journeyman Jin Pop John. Captain of the Treasure Finder. Thank you for hailing back, she said primly, making sure her feathers were all neatly laid flat. A human face blinked onto her communication screen, and she had to resist the urge to chirp about how adorable he was. Just something about how you can see the smile in their eyes, even if this one's mouth was covered with a bushy black beard. Aye, aye, good captain. You sent out uh, that with a request for info in the Republic, and I'm always happy to answer questions. Now you reading an escape pod beacon? Should we provide emergency services? Nay, that isn't escape pod. That is, uh, that's uh, something different. That in it anything of value to that beacon? I don't understand what that beacon's there for. She pressed. Well, uh, alas, uh, tell me, does your clan have any debts? We are roughly 648.6684 tons of salvage away from completely emancipating her entire clan and successfully avoiding accruing additional debt for this generation, Edge very happily informed the captain. The smile in his eyes died as he said, In that case, uh, mayhaps, sir, what do you call them? Debt masters, Jin Pop Jan said, hoping that this human wasn't going to stop being adorable then start being terrifying. Mayhaps, sir, debt masters would find this edifying. Go to it, download the logs, and... Uh, if you feel like it, no hurry. One meeting with the rest of her crew later, and Jin Pop Chan and her other two biological crewmates were crammed into a single occupant cockpit, so as to not miss a moment of solving this mystery as they dropped out of hyperspace to come alongside a low-powered capsule. One debate on whether to just download the logs from the openly squawking comms channel, or to take the pod aboard in the small salvage bay. Later, and the biological crew was clustered before the door of what looked like a multiple occupant escape pod. For humanity, anyway. Confronting the message painted on the outside of the hatch. Let the one thing within have long hours to feel the weight of his sins and solitude to his ending day. You open it, the first officer said, giving his captain and aunt a gentle push. Captain Zana, the engineer, and her great niece said as she pushed as well. I would open it, but it's not responding to commands, Edge helpfully chimed. The good captain found her courage, but not her calm, as evidenced by her bristling feathers, as she pressed the open button on the hatch. There was a pneumatic hiss as the pressure equalized before the bay and inside the pod. 
and the disfigured reptilian corpse was revealed. His eyes had been burned out, his right arm amputated, and at some point, graft. And there was no evidence of a tail, but the injuries looked old, decades old in fact. The milky dullness of the dead Jakku scales indicated that he was an old man. More unsettling were the restraints keeping the aged creature in what looked like a medical gurney. If the houses and tubes going into the various parts of the body meant anything. How did he die? Her engineer whispered. Ever tactfully, Edge answered cheerfully. Old age, from my scans. Old age? How? Why? The first officer said. Something to do with sins, Jin Pop Chan said as she bumped into a piece of equipment in the tight space. Her rasping voice came hissing out of the speakers, and her implant translated it dutifully. I can feel the end coming. I can feel it. Oh, the great egg, let me be born to a poor brood. Oh, great egg, let my soul remember this torment. I will do better next time. I can feel the end coming. Another voice, this one speaking official Republican English said, No further speech detected, voice log 4012 saved. Once their hearts had stopped thundering and their feathers were laying flat again, the Junker crew started playing the logs going backwards at more or less random. From what they could tell, the final year of voice logs followed in much the same vein of religious begging, where as earlier logs ran from wordless screaming to raving against the filthy warm bloods, promises of vengeance, and one-sided conversations. Then they played the first lock. There was a human male voice, deep, hard, and cold as the void itself, saying with formality, Salvasevskis, you have been convicted of kidnapping a Republican serviceman, combat slavery, trespass upon sanctuary, child slavery, and three counts of sexual assault against prepubescent children. Your sentence is to be debeaked, to be set adrift in deep space with the minimum necessity systems to survive until the end of your natural days without a rescue beacon. I do hereby upon January the 28th of the year post-colonization 1773rd execute the sentence. What say you before your words are sealed away until you perish alone in the vastness of space? I will kill every last one of you. There was a sound of a hatch cycling and the unmistakable sound of an escape pod launch. Why would our dead masters find this edifying? The engineer asked with growing horror at the method of execution. Humans call your generational debt slavery with extra steps. And that's what they do to slavers, Edge said solemnly as he calculated whether the Digiton Efficiency Initiative could buy the freedom of the dead slaves before his parents lost their patience and decided forced emancipation was necessary. End of story. Story number two. Terrans, written by Catfish21SM. We are gathered here today to discuss whether we should begin uplift protocol and begin integration of the advanced species found on the planet Terra within the Sol system, or which protocol should be taken for the species. Are you kidding me? They still own slaves. They've made it to space and a large portion of their species still participating in breeding slaves. Agreed. If that weren't inhumane enough, they are all lazy. They do nothing with their time. Guys, uh, you're all missing the biggest issue. They are predators. Silence! I understand that this is not necessarily the most controversial topic. However... It must still be discussed with a calm demeanor. We must come to a calm decision, as any decisions made here not only affect us individually, but the planet of Sol Terra, and to some degree, the entire galaxy. I think we should open up discussions with them. Are you out of your mind? No. I mean, just look at them. They are apex predators on their home world, a tenth tier death world. Furthermore, they have made it to space regardless of their planet's high gravity. Their ingenuity is amazing. That's something that we can definitely use. Aren't you listening? They literally farm creatures several times their own mass, even using these creatures to occasionally provide transportation. Do you want them riding on your back? 
Do you want your family to become their food? Now, I'm not saying that we should integrate them into the Galactic Union, or that we should share our technology with them. I'm merely suggesting that we open up a channel of communication. Maybe they'll realize the error of their ways and change their minds. I'm telling you, we have been observing them for thousands of years, and they only grow worse. It's against their very nature to cooperate. They can't even cooperate with their own kind, unless they are within their mating season. Even then, cooperating typically happens begrudgingly. You're also ignoring the fact that their entire body is built for the purpose of taking down prey that is larger, faster, and hardier than they are. Every aspect of their being is predatory. I agree that we should open up that channel of communications. Not you two. Yes, but for other reasons. Let's look at the environment that they survive in. Their planet is wrought with different environments and natural disasters. From isolated islands to frozen tundras, tropical rainforests, hot and dry deserts, every environment that you could imagine. Then, those environments are rocked with earth-shattering earthquakes, flooded with waters capable of washing away anything in their path, volcanoes that burn and smother everything, hurricanes, tornadoes, blizzards. Their planet's filled with poisonous gases, liquids, even plants and animals. It's classified as a tier 10 death world for a reason. The question I ask you is, how many bombs would it take to make this world more deadly than it already is. How much damage do we have to do to wipe out these creatures? Would that even be possible? We only have two options at our disposal. You see, we either initiate contact or we try to destroy them. Waiting for them to initiate contact is just delaying the inevitable. The problem being, is it even possible to wipe them out at all? If they can survive through all of that, heck, most of them sleep calmly in these environments and through the disasters that I mentioned. Is it possible to kill an entire species like this? If not, then we are just signing our own death warrants by attacking them. At least by contacting them sooner can we see where we stand with them and can we try to get on their good sides before we inevitably bring out their ire. I, uh... I didn't really think about that, but, uh, uh you, you do have a good point, I suppose. It's been silent for a few moments now. Does anyone have anything else that they'd like to say? Okay, then. Let's initiate votes. Please use your tablets to place your votes. We will count them once all votes are placed. The votes have been counted and confirmed. The results are as follows. For those initiating first contact immediately, nine. Those to uplift and integrate into Galactic Union, zero. Those for delaying first contact to a later undetermined date, one. Those for attempted extermination, three. We will initiate contact within 20 Earth hours. This concludes the meeting of the Galactic Union. I really hope things go well. Same here. What do Terrans call themselves anyway? I want to know how to introduce myself to them properly. Well... They apparently all have different names that are given to them at birth. However, they refer to their species as, um, cats, I think. What an absolutely horrifying name. Agreed. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.